Right, hi guys. So welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we are going to review the upcoming EC at Bukit Batok West Avenue Eight, and that's none other than Altura. Right. So in the market right now, you know if you are going to buy an executive condominium, you will find that there's severe undersupply. So in today's market, you can only buy into North Gaya and Yishun, or you can only buy to right now Altura EC that's located at Bukit Batok West Avenue Eight. But is the EC really worth buying? So if you are actually thinking of putting a check in this upcoming development, I would strongly suggest you watch this video first as there's something that you definitely need to be aware of. Okay? Okay, so let's talk about uh, the land bid. So this land is actually bought by Qin Jian and Shantari. And if you don't know, they actually broke on the record price for executive condominium land we have previously also bidded by them at located at Japanese Street 62 and that's the net. Okay, so the developer actually bought a pretty high price for this piece of land. But if you think about it, why would the developer pay such a high price for a land in Bukit Bato? Because is it the location really very good or they know that there is a severe undersupply in the EC market? If you were to ask me, right, I would say that it's more of the latter choice. I think the developer knows that there will be an undersupply in the EC market. Therefore, they actually bid for this piece of land and see a very similar pattern. So in 2013, before the cooling measures, Lake Life was the previous project that actually broke the EC land bid record. And there hasn't been any record broken until Piermont Grand in 2018. So what similarities can you find in 2013 and 2018? Both are years where the property market are going at very, very high prices. Right, of course, again, in 2021, Open Grand, this development was developed by CDL, who broke the EC land bid record again. Then, of course, King Jian broke the next record at Fort Tenet, but Tenet, of course, in the mature estate in Tampines, then followed by Altura. So what can we really tell from this? So normally, in locations that are better, developer will naturally have to pay a higher price for the piece of land. But you can see that when EC are breaking record for land bids, it will always mean that the developers know there's a current market of undersupply of EC units in the area. So this technically means that if you want to buy the Altura, you might actually be disadvantaged because you are actually buying in the environment where there is currently a lot of undersupply. So later in the video, I'll share with you my verdict on this project and whether or not I would really put my money into this project if I were in your position, right? So uh, yeah, so let's take a look at the next slide. Okay, so let's look at uh, Altura over here. And one thing that I noticed from this map that is pretty disappointing is that if you look at all the MRT stations, they are very, very far away. So this is a 500 meter radius. And of course, uh, at the back of it, you have the BTO development West Cape. Then of course, there will be another EC coming up here that is developed by CDL. And that has a slightly lower land bid, right? So because Altura broke the record, the CDL actually did not bid higher. So is there a possibility that will launch at a lower price? There might be. But if Altura sees a very good response, then there's no reason why CDL will actually launch the development at a lower price. But of course, another thing that I will let you know is that at the front of this development, I have a primary school over here. So you need to have a here. I would believe that if you are going from level 8 inwards, you will be a block. But the rest of the units that you are looking at, even the back, but the left, the right, you will all actually be blocked by developments. So this area is basically a concrete jungle, right? So what's really disappointing is that the MRT stations are all more than 500 meters away. So it means that for you to walk on the nearest MRT, it's actually pretty hard to walk to. Okay, so even for uh, Tenga Park at Tenga Plantation MRT, it will take two bus stops away from Altura East. So is the MRT really, really important to ensure that the development make good profits. So we are able to find out next in the video. Okay? Before that, let's talk a bit about this development. So, right, about 360 units. 
So it has only three to five bedroom. It's very common from for each nowadays. So it can usually don't build one and two bedrooms anymore. And it's a pretty small shot area at only 12,000 square meters. And of course, with the gross floor area, there is 7,000 square meters. And the highest floor is actually 15 stories high. Okay, so this is the aerial view of the whole development. Again, you can see that what you need are facing here. There is pretty open view if you are able to go above level 8. However, you know, when you are facing the entrance, there will be a HDB that's already building over here, and there will be upcoming E3 by CDL over here as well. So at the back, there is also another HDB called Westgate. So in terms of the views that you are able to enjoy for this development, it's very, very uh, short part, I would say. Okay, and also you are in a residential jungle. So you can find that uh, the nearest amenities that you are going to enjoy is probably from the Quest Mall, right? And if you have been there, there's not much going on there, to be frank. And a lot of the shops, although it's controlled by developer, but Chun as well, they do not provide much of a variety. In fact, I do have one of my clients who set up a store there. And I will say that even with the video switching in, the traffic flow to the Quest Mall, is not very, very good. In fact, the nearest big mall is at West Mall and Bukit Batok MRT Station. So, moving to Altura, you have to know that uh, you are moving into a residential jungle. You know, like this is very similar to a lot of the Pongo issues. So, you have, if you want to go to the nearest mall, it might be quite a distance away. So, that's something that you, if you want to buy to this development, you have to be comfortable with as well. Okay, so again, this is a unit type, right? So you have all the way from three bedrooms, all the way to five bedrooms. And the smallest unit has 980 square feet, has slightly over $1.3 million. Okay, so is the proximity to MRT really important for profits? I think if you, have, you are watching this video and you have talked to a few agents, they might tell you that, you know, in order to sell you this development, proximity to MRT is not important. Right, but today I'm going to do a few case studies. Take a look at past executive condominiums that are launched near the MRT and compare them to those that were further away from MRT and how they differ in terms of the profitability. Okay, so firstly, let's take a look at Altura first. So Altura right now, right, is actually located two bus stops away from Tengah Plantation MRT. So it's about 1.2 kilometers away to the nearest MRT station. So it's probably a little bit hard to walk, lah, okay? So another thing you saw that I don't really like about this development is that uh, it's not near Tenga MRT station. So Tenga MRT is the core town center. So in that area, there will be a lot of amenities and probably a mall over there as well. So you are a bit, a bit further away from Tengah MRT. And in fact, even to work with Tengah Plantation, we have about 1.2 kilometers already. Okay, so again, if you look at the nearest mall, the nearest big mall will again be West Mall, right? And even if we are near Echo Park MRT, uh, Echo Park MRT does not have a mall as well. Okay, so that's something that you have to look at. You have to know about our two In terms of connectivity to public transportation, you will be two bus stops in the MRT station. Okay, so today we are going to do a real comparison of whether proximity to MRT is important for profits. So we are going to take uh, four executive condominiums that were launched. So we are going to compare all civil residences the canopy, as marina residences, and privé. So Osville is about 30 minutes walk away to Bangkok MRT. The canopy is 26 minutes walk to Yishun MRT. So you can definitely cannot walk. Lah. Okay, so as marina residences is very radio MRT. It's 4 minutes walk to Bangkok MRT. And finally, we are going to take privé. There's 8 minutes walk to Pongo MRT. So, looking at these examples, right, Ash Marina and Privé are the nearest to MRT, followed by Osfield and the Canopy. So, in terms of their TOP date, their TOP uh, date is very near each other, so it's around the 2013 to 2014 range. So, let's take a look at how they differ in profit. Okay, so I went to 99.4, right, to plot a chart for these four developments. 
And you can see that for the purple line, Ahmed Rina Rashid Al-Kashmi did very, very well. In fact, in, from only 10 till today, it actually increased by over 92%. And for Freeway, that is near uh, Congo MRT, it's increased by over 79%. So it's doing very, very well. But let's take a look at development yeah, further away from the MRT. Uh, Australia residence and the canopy. Okay, so if we take a look at the uh, Australia residence the orange color line, it actually also not bad, increased by 70%, but the canopy only increased by over 54% since 2010. So, proximity to MRT definitely plays a part in terms of the profit margin, right? So, uh, but you hear Asia telling you, hey, you know, so acres are in Kashukang. It's not the MRT, but they are still very profitable. But you have to know that Show Acres is a different product category altogether. Show Acres is a big development. It's an EC that has over 1,000 units. So it's really not a very fair comparison. So from this example, right, we know that proximity to MRT is very important for the executive condominium profit margins. Okay? So, speaking of that, let's take a look at small developments versus big developments, right? So, uh, let's take a look at the past executive condominiums that were launched. Okay, so these are the, all the executive condominiums that were launched. So, the one that I circled in green color, right? These are the top three biggest developments in terms of the unit size, the number of units that has already cleared its MOP status. So, the top three uh, executive condominiums in terms of units, they are the biggest is so acres at Shafukang. Then of course, uh, you have the terrace at Pongo, 747 units, and followed by Topiary. So Topiary is actually along the Yokshukang area. So these are the top three biggest developments of executive condominiums that have already clear this MOP status. On the other hand, we are going to take the three smallest developments that have already cleared MOP. So we will take a look at the Armory with 378 units and last big crush at 380 units and followed by Twin Fountains with 418 units. So you must know that for Altura, right? Altura has only 360 units. It's going to be the one of the smallest development that has been launched in for a while. So the other smaller developments are North Wave. So North Wave will uh, hit its MOP status. Uh, so I think early next year. So Altura is something that is a very, very small development, right? So let's take a look and compare their profit margins for big developments against small developments and how they differ. Okay, so for small developments, right? Last April has 80 units. Since the launch in 2013, it went up by 60.95%. Then uh, the Amore with 378 units went up by 55.67%. Uh, then followed by Twin Fountains at 54.64% with 418 units. So these are the smallest developments in terms of executive condominiums that has already MOP. But if we look at the big developments, the profit margins really differ a lot. You can see that for Opiary, right? It actually went up by 72%, although it was launched earlier in 2013. And uh, four acres with over 1,300 units have also went up by 70% already, although it just MOP this year. Then, of course, last but not least, uh, the terrace was not MOP last year, went up by 61.13%. So, you know, for big developments, right, in this era, it's a very big factor in allowing profit margins. And Altura, not only is not a big development, but it's also far away from MRT. So in my honest opinion, these two things make the development look not very good. Lah. Okay? Again, uh, what do I like about Altura? Although the two main elements that I do not like is that it's not near the mall, it's not near amenities, it's not near MRT, and it has more development. What I like about Altura is that, you know, looking at the regional prices in the area, the Quest, right, although it's an integrated development, has already transacted more than $1,600 per square feet. So this is a very strong retail market price support. 
But when I take a look at property guru, right, they are already 30 units at the quest uh, selling at the moment. Uh. So from this, I can infer that, you know, a unit at the quest, although they are selling at $1,600 per square feet, because a lot of the first owners bought at the range of $1,000 to $1,300, offloading a unit in their development right, is not that straightforward and the demand is not very, very high. So I nevertheless, it still shows that people are willing to pay $1,600 for a Bukit Batok West Avenue 8 area unit. Lah. So this is something that is very, very encouraging. Okay, so I think by 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 here you have known that I'm not a very big fan of Altura. But if not Altura, then what? So let's take a look at the upcoming executive condominiums that are going to be launched, right? So right now we are in an environment of undersupply. There is really not enough executive condominiums in the market right now. So if you're going to buy each three, right? If you need to buy, if you are thinking you know, whether to wait for the upcoming developments, I'm going to share with you what the upcoming developments they are launching soon. So firstly, we have one at plantation flows in the Tanga area. So this one is a slightly bigger development because the gross floor area is about 46,000 square meters. So Altura is only 37,000 square meters, which is very, very small. So the one that I really, really am looking forward to, uh, if I were to buy an EC and I'm not in a rush, right, is the Tampani Street 62 parcel. Because right, this has a very big land area, 2.8 hectares, it's about 8,000 square meters, 8,000 square meters, and this has a gross floor area of 70,000 square meters. So this is the development that I will really eye for, and definitely switch to it also in the mature estate. Lab. But most importantly, the question is, how much are the developers bidding for this piece of land? If they are bidding very, very high, then the asset price will make sense, then also no point, right? And of course, there's one more upcoming application flows that will actually be uh, launched for tender in November 2023. But this will all be upcoming land parcels, uh, they're coming up maybe next year. So if you are not in a rush to get your home, then I would really suggest that you wait for the upcoming issue, especially the one at Tampani Street 62. Now, of course, in the reserve list, we have one that just close. This one is very interesting la, because the land is so small, eh? only uh, one hectare, so it's actually a very small piece of land. But in Shenja, I don't recall that have them having any uh history other than the one at Blossom Residences that is near Saga area. La. Yeah, so these are very interesting ones. I think the location can really, really help. But uh I really I feel that the one that is you should look forward to right is this one, that many switch we do pass for me. Then of course, uh again there's one more at Ebony 95, but this one is uh again open for tender in November 2023. La. Yeah, so uh yeah. What is my verdict for Altura? Personally, if I'm not in a rush and I'm looking at the E3, I would not buy Altura, right? Because I don't like that it's in a concrete jungle. There's not many amenities and MRT is quite far away. We, are not, we cannot work on the MRT. And not only that, it's a small development. And from my case studies, bigger developments always make more profit margins. But again, you know, if you are buying each three, right, you must also know that there's an element of own display, lah, right? So you cannot look at a pure investment perspective because if you look at a pure investment perspective, then sometimes you might want to go into a private market as well. Okay, so what I like about Altura is that it's a strong price support from the press. Well, the press already is projected for over $1,600 per square feet. And there's a lot of uh, HDBs nearby. So... These HDBs they may actually give you a very good uh, demand when uh, Altura hit the high mobile status. But although a lot of agents like to say this, but I don't really 100% agree. Lah. Because if you MOP already, why must you move within the same area? Because you okay, but look, you have, you have moved around, you have moved to Jogo East, you have moved to Panjang, maybe you are okay to stay in the West. You don't have to be in Bukit Batok. Ma. But uh, at least there is still uh, a number of HDB upgraders. So I, I believe there's still an element of uh, upgraders that want to stay in the same area. So that's something that's also a good point. Uh. But all in all, I feel that at this current market, I would rather enter into North Gaia than Altura because North Gaia is a much bigger development. And even for the price support, we look at Symphony Switch, right? That development has already been targeting over $1,200 per square feet. And 
North Carolina has a lower entry price as compared to Aurora, right? Although North Carolina is in a different location, but in Hopper, the part the West and Eastern, right? Both are still not, not very favorable to their locations now. So in terms of profit margins, I really, really believe that North Carolina can make more money because of the number of units and also the land size, right? So I would rather, if it's not, if it's not your forever home, you can also drop a consideration of North Carolina instead of Alcura. But if you're not in a hurry, then of course wait for the Tampani Street 62 parcel B. So that's across the net. So this is the upcoming development that I'm very excited about. So hopefully the land bid price is not so high now, you know, that developers still can give us consumers and buyers a very good chance at a good entry price. Okay, so I'm actually coming to the end of the video. And if you do not know, this is actually the price range of uh, the Alcura for the three bedroom premium and 980 square feet with her study. It's not for 1.348 million dollars. So it's below $1,400 square feet. Lah. Then for the four bedroom, it's about 1.668. Then the four bedroom premium is 1.998 million. And of course, the five bedroom is slightly over $2.1 million. Pretty reasonable prices. But uh, yeah, so I leave it up to you guys to see whether this development will be a good one for you. But my verdict is that if you're not in a hurry, don't buy. We are in a hurry for China North Gaia. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to text me and contact me in my social media channels. Uh, or you can actually uh, just leave a YouTube comment below. And last but not least, uh, if you this video has provided value to you, feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up button. If not, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.